Joy FM Fantastic Four Tours. We visited Afaja, Tovota Lake, Cape Coast Castle, among others. Here's just a reminder of what you missed last year. So very soon we'll be going on to that um, canopy work. Are we ready, people? Yes! yes. That's up about 250 feet above sea level. People are tired already. In less than 10 minutes, we have to take our rest. I think I've lost one of my lungs already. I'm working with the other one now. Oh. I am tired already. We're supposed to do one hour. We've done six minutes. Slowly but surely, we got to the canopy walkway. As usual, there were screams. I'm almost there! I'm almost there! Ah! I made it! Oh my god! Those who walk like the boss. And that's how it will be this year, and even better. And one of the ambassadors for the Conquer Ghana tour is joining his editor, Araba Kumsin. She joins us in studio. You yes. love to chill, so why not? <laughs> so where are we going? So we're going to Cape Coast, we're going to Kumasi, we're going to Kentampo, Damango, and Tamale. So mm. we're really exploring Ghana. And some of the attractions, of course, are the Cape Coast Castle, Asim Manso Slave River Site, at the Minshia Palace Museum, Kentampo Waterfalls, the Mole National Park, Larabanga Mosque, and the Mystic Stone. It's going to be fantastic. And all this for how much? Oh, just for 1,500 Ghana 1, cities? Yes. Of course. And uh, why not? You want to join Araba Kumsin to conquer Ghana. And then after we conquer Ghana, we go to Turkey. And that's it uh, for the midday news here on Joy 99.7 FM. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Pau. Thanks for your company. What kind of phone is this? Hey, Joe, I'm Ah, chance not for you. Go be upgrade it. Just not dial it. Star 120, star 1 hash. Now we can empty and resume level trouble. Hey, Limu. If we end up in every person in a year, we would have to use your MTN number. Do more. Now we need one of the 20,000 iPro Amber 5 S phones. Cafe door. But come up. Test it. Now we can come up. I bet now. Can you say we'll be changing your ringtone? So we'll start with iPro Amber 5 S phone. MT and Rezi will have a problem. New year, new phone, new ringtone. We are good together. We're there for you. Everywhere you go. As we celebrate our 25th anniversary, praise and thanks must go to those who deserve it. In the beginning, God who has expanded us exceedingly and brought us to a pleasant place. Indeed, our inheritance is delightful. Psalm 16, 6. All praise, glory, and honor to Christ at work in multimedia, who causes us to accomplish exceedingly, abundantly above what we ever ask or imagine. Ephesians 3, 20. Celebrating 25 years. Ready for more explosive fun on your favorite late afternoon radio show, Drive Time on Joy. Yo, 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 yo. My name is Lexus Bale. Join me every weekday from 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Let's jam to great tunes, have great laughs, and win loads of goodies. Every Friday, you stand a chance of winning an all-expenses-paid hangout at an exclusive location with four of your friends on our Drive Parties Party. Explore G8 will take you around Ghana to see amazing sights. Plus, let's have intriguing travel conversations on our travel series every Thursday. Every Wednesday, the Drive Doctor comes with good health education. Your favorite role models and public figures will share their inspirational stories on personality profile every Thursday. And your favorite celebrities will pull through on Behind the Fame every Monday. You know where your dial should be locked every afternoon. Drive time on Joy with Lexus Bill. Here are the nominees for Three Music Awards 2020 DJ of the Year. 
DJ Varosky, DJ Mike Smith, DJ Sly, DJ Aroma, DJ Castro, DJ Slim, iPhone DJ to vote for your favorite DJ of the year. Dow Star 447 Star 3 Hush. Three Music Awards 2020 is presented by three media networks. Joy FM, Hit FM, Joy Prime TV, The Fantasy Dome and ENE Ghana with support from Love FM, Join UCV, Adobe FM, Adobe TV, Asempa FM, Ashura FM, and MyJoyOnline.com, Gold Coast Restaurant, Volta Hotel, Akosombo, and the Radio Advertising People. Trap, 3 Music Awards 2020. Hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in word with Pastor Mensa Otobil. And now, today's word. So, number two, we see what God said should happen. Let there be light. Though darkness is the prevailing condition, God wants to change it into something else. And to do that, he speaks a new thing into existence. And that's very important that when we want to change a situation, we have to start expressing what we want. So if you say, for example, that I don't like this filth. That's easy. But what do you want? God didn't say, I don't like the darkness. I hate the darkness. I detest the darkness. But he spoke the expected result. His intention. Let there be light. Somebody has said, don't curse the darkness. Just speak the light. Don't complain about the darkness. Just speak what you want. What do you want? What kind of Ghana do we want? What kind of church do we want? What kind of family do we want? What kind of light do we want? So, prevailing condition darkness, what God wants is let there be light. Then we see what actually happened. It's one thing saying let there be and another thing the thing happening. And the Bible says there was light. So God didn't just daydream. He said it and it was. It actually happened. Like saying, Accra is going to be the most beautiful city in Africa. Let there be light. And there was darkness. (laughs) You talk it, but it didn't happen. And that is not a political statement. <laughs> Let there be light. Can you imagine the next verse would say, God said, Let there be light. And there was darkness. Would I wonder, what kind of God is this? When you say one thing, the opposite is happening. Let there be light. And actually, it happened. So when you say things, it must actually happen. I'm losing weight. And there was. Not that the year you said, I'm going this year, I'm slimming, I'm going to lose with the, you, you added a few more pounds. All right. So, what is happening in the world? What God said should happen? What actually happened? Number four, what God saw. God saw the light. In other words, it was evident. It didn't just happen in his head. It was out there. And he saw it. He looked at what had happened. He paid attention to what had happened. 
Number five. And this is very important. Number five. What God thought of what had happened. And God saw the light and it was good. Approval. Quality control. Did what had happened meet God's standard? Yes. He saw it and said, this is what I had in mind. It was good. Number six is very important. What did God did to what had happened? He divided the light from the darkness. He separated them. Now what you would notice from the passage is that the light did not take away the darkness forever. So light was happening. Darkness was also happening. God saw the light that it was good. And in order for light and darkness not to remain in the same space and occur at the same time and be seen as the same thing, he separated the light from the darkness. He separated them. Separation helps us to determine what we approve of and what we don't approve of. And then the seventh thing that we see that God did. What God called what had happened, he called the light day, the darkness he called night. He had a name and a label for those two conditions. Light is not called darkness and darkness is not called light. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. He put the right labels on it. He doesn't call a new artist a legend. He doesn't call an ordinary building ultra modern. Sometimes even in the church. Somebody just starts a church. He has two confused people in the church and they're calling him Papa. My Papa. And then somebody has done a great work for years, over 40 years. You also call him Papa. So Papa that, Papa this. One is light, the other is darkness. But we call both Papa. Why? Because we don't know the difference. We are not able to differentiate. We want everybody to be the same. After all, we are all human beings. We are all equal. Yes, we are created equal. But our achievements are not equal. And don't don't call somebody at achievement 100. By the same way you call somebody at achievement 5. When you do that, it is as if you are boosted. Your judgment has been impaired. And God wants us to approve of things that are excellent. In other words, if it is not excellent, don't call it excellent to encourage the person. If it's cheap, tell him it's cheap so he can improve. You know, because sometimes in this country, I see all kinds of somebody has made a car with milk tin. And he's pushing and they say, this young boy has invented a car. This one. Or somebody makes a helicopter, supposedly with some mismatched components. And the thing is just turning around, 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 around. The rotor is turning around, around. It's not going anywhere. It can't fly. But we clap, yeah! this is the best it's good to encourage people but don't lower the standards to encourage people you raise the standard and tell the people you can improve to get to this level excellence must be set apart from ordinariness 
ordinariness. Because I'm going to tell you this. Much of what we produce in this country is below standard. And I'm not saying this to put us down. I'm just saying it for us to know that we have to improve. Much of what we do. I'm telling you, you go to another country and you find an expert here is not even at the lowest level. But we keep praising ourselves. Patting each other on the back. And we have used the wrong words to describe things. Somebody starts doing something and we call him, this is, this is a new whatever and we give him superlatives. And you look at what he's doing, he's miserable. There's hope in it. There's future, there's potential. But let the person know what he has done has potential. It has promise. But it hasn't arrived. And when you tell people their work is rubbish, they feel offended. Yeah, but I've given my best. And so what? It still doesn't meet the standard. The standard is excellence is here. You are trying to find your level down below here. You have potential. You have promise. You can be excellent, but you are not. And we must have the confidence to label things right. God called the darkness. He says you were there before the light came. But you are dark. And the light came second. It is day. He labeled them differently. Alright. When you read through the book of Genesis further. You see that God has levels of approval. Three that we see in Genesis. Doesn't mean that is all that he has. But three in the book of Genesis. One, first level is the acceptable. We just read it in Genesis 1, 4. It is good. God saw the light that it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. So there is a good. That is repeated in verse 10, in verse 12, verse 18, verse 21. And verse 25. Good. Then he has a standard above this. It is the excellent. It's in Genesis chapter 131. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So good is not the same as very good. The same God. But putting different levels of marker on what he has done. He himself has done. One level is good. One level is very good. Then there's another level of God. That is the unacceptable. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And God said, it is not good that man should be alone. So the same God has good, very good, not good. Good, very good, not good. So it it simply means that sometimes even from one source we can have good, very good, and not good. And this is God, the big boss himself. Good, very good, not good. If somebody says it's not good, it doesn't mean he will not do anything about it. God says it is not good, but I will fix it. It is not good for the man to be alone. So I'm going to fix that not good. So acknowledging that it is not good helps you to fix it. But if you call not good, very good. I told you at the beginning of this series about a musician I know of. Who traveled from Ghana to America. To go and change America. America, here we come. When he was in Ghana, he was a major guitarist. Known. I won't mention his name. <coughs> went to America. And he went to do cleaning and all uh, some other things. He didn't play music. He returned. Came to see me. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, I couldn't play. 
Because the guitar I was playing here that I thought I was the best, the high school people, the secondary school people were playing more than me. He didn't even do one recording. He just clean, 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 clean and came back. It broke his confidence. The sad thing is when he came back, he stopped music. Because all of a sudden he realized he's very good. 